Hey guys, what's up? It's Jarek Huber. In this video, we have an unboxing from IQ Mart. Uh, this is a store that was pretty popular uh, back around like 2010 and earlier and stuff like that. I used to order from them. The reason that I ordered from them today um, is because they have a bunch of old 3x3s that were still in stock um, that were basically out of stock everywhere else. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I managed to remember this store. It just kind of popped into my mind like, oh yeah, IQ Mart. They used to sell, you know, old cubes and stuff so I figured I would um, see what kind of stuff they had on their website and they just had a bunch of old 3x3 still in stock um, and so I ordered them and we're gonna check them out all right so uh, it looks like they included a whole bunch of like IQ Mart bags and merchandise and stuff but we've got an IQ Mart bag We've got a couple, um, we've got three wristbands here, and we've got a sticker peeler. So, IQ Mart. Cool. So that was extremely nice of them to send me that stuff, because I didn't order this stuff. It looks like we also got a sticker set. I'm not sure what this is for, or if this is extra, but let's go ahead and see what we got in here. First of all, we have a Diane Panchi. One of the last places where you can actually still get panchies. This is the worst Dian cube that has pretty much ever been made, but it's out of stock, which means that it does have a certain level of rarity. So I got that, even though I already have a black one. Um, I also got an MF8 Legend. So I think this is the version two. Um, I think I also got the version one. Look at this, guys. We have a DIY kit. Oh my gosh, I haven't gotten a DIY kit in years wow so this is the way a lot of cubes used to come they would just come completely disassembled no lubricant and you had to set it up all by yourself and it was a lot of fun um i don't know i think this is an alpha cube yeah check it out guys that's an alpha logo looks like we got a cube for you gas assisted 3x3 i used to actually have one of these uh in white i have since sold it i don't know why i don't know why i sold all my all my old cubes because i had a lot of rare stuff that's hard to find that i just sold we've got a maru 2x2 this is a cube for you 3x3 i think this is a cube for you diy in white um or just in a like an assembled cube for you 3x3 or something We've got another alpha cube. We've got a Maru 3x3. Again, these are hard to come by as well. We've got a Landland 3x3. We've also got, yes, I mentioned this in the 60 cube unboxing, um, how I wanted to get a Wit Long. This is the Type-C 4 Wit Long because I got the Wit U and the Wit U V2 in that um, video. But I um, I was talking about how I wanted to get the Wit Long because that was one of my first speed cubes, and I also sold it. Uh, and that's actually kind of what inspired me to look it up. I looked up Wit Longs, and, and I found it on IQ Mart, and then I started checking out the rest of their store. We've also got a Sheng N cube. This looks like a Type Four, so this is a Type F Four, and we got an MF8 Legend. I think this is the version one. And that's everything. So before I get into all this stuff, I do want to show you a couple of other older 3x3s that I've gotten recently that I haven't made unboxings for, but I wanted to show them in this video. Um, so the first one is an Alpha 5. So the Alpha 5 uh, was a very, very classic 3x3, pretty much the best 3x3 you could get before the Diane Guhong came out. Um, I actually got this at my last competition. Um, as you can see, I signed it here. Uh, the, the person who um, I bought it from brought it to me to sell. I saw that it was an Alpha Cube. I saw it was an Alpha 5. And I basically was just like, dude, I want to buy this from you. You know, how much will you sell it for? So I think I bought it for like 30 bucks or something like that, which seems like a lot for an old 3x3 like this. But I'm a collector. I like collecting 3x3s. And um, I wanted to get an Alpha 5 because these are out of stock, even on IQ Mart. Um, and I used to have a black one, but I settled for this white one. I do want to get a black one eventually. Another cube I got recently is a Shengen Type F3. Uh, someone on Puzzle Trader was selling this and I nabbed it pretty much as soon as he listed it, I'm pretty sure. Um, this one also is kind of in a primary plastic, kind of cream type color. You can see it's not quite the same as the white, um, but yeah, I got the Shengen F2 uh, recently, so I figured I'd get the F3 as well. 
Again, this one's in white. It would be nice to uh, get it in black, but that's the thing with a lot of these older cubes. It's much easier to find them in white since more people liked black cubes. Um, so those obviously would sell out first. So if you find any cubes in stock on older websites, uh, it's most likely going to be a white cube. But <clears throat> either way, I did manage to find some black cubes in this order. So that's uh, let's just go ahead and get, uh, go through what we got in this order first. Uh, speaking of the Type F3, let's go ahead and check out the Type F4. So I managed to get this in black, uh, which is really, really great. So this is also in the original packaging. So you can see here on the front of the box, there's like a lenticular type screen. So it kind of switches between these two images. I would assume that's the designer of the puzzle. So that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and open it up. So this is a very, very blocky cube. And as you can see, the cuts are really, really strange. Those corner cuts are quite weird. Um, Shengen was a very, very popular company for cubes back in like 2009 and stuff. And I didn't even really know that they made a Type F4, but apparently they did. So Turning is uh, not quite as good as the Type F2 or F3. Taking a look at the mechanism. Yeah, they definitely went with a different mechanism on this one, which is, um, you know, why it doesn't turn as nice. And wow, would you look at that? The corner actually has a screw in it, just like um, the GAN cubes that we have now. So I'm wondering if this was maybe one of the first cubes that actually ever did that. But yeah, the cuts on the corners are just really strange. Just a very, very weird cube. It's really cool to just kind of have these puzzles that not that many people know about because I kind of I want to, you know, show you guys what cubing used to be like and show you guys older 3x3s, older mechs, stuff like that. Just for comparison, I will show you guys the Type F3 mech. So this is kind of just a more hollow version of uh, the F2, which was based off a of Rubik's brand, basically. A lot of these old cubes were just modified Rubik's brand mechs. The Dian Guhang was kind of one of the first cubes that really changed the way mechanisms worked in speed cubes. Um, so yeah. All right, up next, looks like we've got a Land Land 3x3 here. Again, if I remember correctly, I used to have one of these. I don't know though but let's go ahead and check it out. So this is very, very similar to a Rubik's brand. I'm pretty sure if we look at the mechanism, it is basically just exactly like a Rubik's brand, uh, but it looks like, I think this one can be tensioned, so you should be able to pop off these caps and tension it, uh, which is a big advantage over the Rubik's brand. And yeah, so there you go. All right, next up, the Whit Long. Speaking of mechanisms, this one has quite a different mechanism. So well, let's check it out. This is one of my first reviews. Um, if you <laughs> really want to go back and check it out, I have a review of this cube back when it first came out, like five years ago. It was one of the first cubes, uh, three by threes, I reviewed on my channel. Um, and yep, I definitely remember that feeling. This cube did used to be my main. Um, because it was about the best thing I had. But yeah, this is what the pieces looked like. There's an edge. And there's a corner. The corner is very open. This was one of the main problems with it, was just the hollowness of the corner. It caused some unnecessary lockups. And then the core was really cool. Um, this is what made it so impossible to pop this cube is that the core had like these dual segments. So you had the centerpiece and then you had this little uh, thing at the near the bottom of the core, uh, which is what all of the edges kind of hooked underneath. So you had like this kind of like triple interlocking system. So you kind of had this torpedo and then you had this part and then you had this part. So the pieces, when they locked together, um, they just, it was very hard to pop. So. Yeah, the corners would kind of sit on the outside of that shell and then the edges would pop inside of it. So yeah, there you go. A uh, Wit Eden Type C4. So now I have the uh, Type C3, 4, 5, and 5 V2. So I'm just missing the two original ones. All right, let's go ahead and check out this 2x2, this Maru 2x2. So Maru 2x2s, again, is one of the first alternatives you could get besides like the Lan Lan uh, that was basically a springed version of the Ishin. Um, the Ishin 2x2 I also do want to get. Those are still mass produced though, um, so I'll, I'll get one at some point. I don't know for how long, but I mean Ishin cubes have been in mass production for 
you know, a, many, many years. So I don't think they will stop anytime soon. I do have the Ishin 4x4 and 5x5. I am just missing the 2x2 now. So this puzzle came comes with Maru Lube and this is the cube with the original Maru logo and just very squared off appearance. Oof, very, very stiff. So Maru would definitely help and the tensions are just incredibly tight. So I'll have to see if I can actually manage to get a, a screwdriver down in that spring down there to loosen this up because this turns pretty bad. And then I'm sure I'll just have to uh, put some Maru in there and it'll be turning a lot better. All right, up next we've got a cube for you, gas assisted three by three. So this is a very, very heavy cube. Um, it's really strange. So I don't know how to describe it really, um, but the turning just felt really weird. Even though the cube was super heavy, the turning was really, really light. So, yeah, it's just a really strange 3x3. I don't know how the whole gas assisted mechanism works. So this is what the pieces look like. There's like this ring here that's, I don't know what it does really. Um, and those are kind of like on all the pieces. And then there's one on the corner as well. This is just a very, very unique uh, 3x3 to have. And the turning is actually really nice. It's really smooth and it handles pretty good. And then that original cube for you logo, that's such an iconic logo, at least for me. Um, yeah, what a cool cube. All right, let's go ahead and open up this other cube for you puzzle. So I think this is just, I'm gonna actually go ahead and open this on the bottom. I think this is just a standard cube for you 3x3. Yeah, that's what it feels like. So I have one of these in orange, actually. Someone on Puzzle Trader was selling one. Um, this one turns a lot better and it's in white, so it's a little bit more of a normal color. It would be nice to get a black one, but yeah, this is basically a cube for you DIY type cube. Um, this one, of course, is assembled, but a lot of people would get these uh, as DIY kits and set them up themselves. As you saw, the core is basically the same as a Rubik's brand, but that's the main thing with, with uh, cube for you cubes is they were adjustable. One of the first adjustable cubes you could get. cube for you DIY was one of the first real speed cubes, I'm pretty sure, actually. So I'm probably uh, missing a lot of important details and getting some stuff wrong with a lot of this history. Um, I'm just kind of trying to remember a lot of the fuzzy details of what was going on with cubing when I very when I first started, um, because I didn't really know much about the actual cubing community or that it really even existed when I first started. But I just remember hearing little things here and there about certain cubes, this one being one of them, the Guhong being one of them. Even though I didn't get the Guhong when it first launched, I'm pretty sure I was cubing when it first launched. Um, I just didn't really know what it was, you know, or where to buy it or anything like that. This is definitely a cool piece of cubing history, kind of. And again, pretty hard to find, pretty hard to come across, but a very, very cool cube to have. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and check out this Alpha Cube. So it looks like this is the Alpha 3F. So this kind of shows the progression of the Alpha Cubes, it looks like, um, of what each one basically looked like. Um, so this one on the very right looks like the Alpha 5. These are the designers, I would imagine. And yeah, this is, it says world record. Alpha Cubes were world record cubes when they came out. It's got very, very blocky appearance. That classic, classic Alpha Cube logo, 57 millimeters. Definitely feels bigger than anything, any 3x3 you'd get now. And then moving it. Very classic, older 3x3 feeling. Very dry, definitely needs lubricant. So this is the mechanism it had. A very, very open design, very minimal, not a whole lot actually holding the pieces in place. I don't know how uh, how long a lot of these cubes will be in stock on iCube Mart. Um, I, you know, nabbed them before they went out of stock. I don't know how many more they have. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to try some old speed cubes, definitely check out iCube Mart because they've got some in stock. All right, next up, let's check out a Maru 3x3. So this one was only available in white. That's all right though. So this is a similar packaging to the 4x4. You get the cube, the Maru lube, uh, extra set of stickers, the stand, and the pamphlet. So I'm definitely gonna be holding on to these stickers, especially because it has that logo. Um, and let's go ahead and check out 
the 3x3. So it comes in this packaging case here, and then it comes in this same kind of application tape plastic wrap that the 4x4 did, the uh, Mario 4x4 V2. So let's go ahead and get these off of here. I'm pretty sure they just apply the stickers, but then just use the application tape sheets just to kind of protect it. There we go. Oh man, yep. Yeah, this is a cube that I know was good, but out of the box is bad. You know, you really gotta work on these. So it definitely needs some tensioning. It's gotta be loosened quite a bit and definitely lubricated. It's completely dry. Well, I'm glad I have all this Maru lube now. This is, uh, this is really great. And I've got the one from the 4x4 too. So I'm gonna have to use that on those cubes. But yeah, there you go, Maru 3x3 in white. All right, up next we've got the MF8 Legend. Um, I never have gotten to try this cube, but yeah, let's check it out. This one, it feels a little smaller. This one feels like maybe 55 millimeters. Comparing it to this cube, which is 57, yeah, it's 55, maybe even a little smaller than 55. Um, and the pieces were very bubbly, rounded. Let's go ahead and turn it. Pretty rough out of the box, but again, needs to be tensioned and lubed. Here we go, here's an edge. Very, very simple, kind of interesting design. And then the corner, and what's interesting about the MFA cubes is they actually had ball cores. So all the pieces would sit around this ball core and turn around it. So as you can see, the, uh, the corner, it was just very, very hollow um, and concave in here in the stock so that it would fit around this ball core. Yeah, I think with a little bit of lube and some loosening, this would actually be an, uh, a nice cube. So yeah, MF8 Legend 3x3. With that, let's go ahead and check out the version two. So, this one was tiled, uh, which is pretty interesting. And then the tiles were actually uh, a little bit concave so that I guess it would help with grip or something like that. Um, I actually remember this cube coming out. I think I had already started my channel, but it was just a cube that I was never interested in, so I never got it. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and move it. This definitely turns a lot, lot better than the version one out of the box. Um, whoa, <laughs> that is a very strange design. Wow, that's really cool. And then, then these corners are also really weird. And then if you kind of open them up, you can kind of see the caps on the inside there. And then on the inside, they ditched the ball core and just went to a normal core and screws and springs with a completely black core. But yeah, that edge is just so weird looking. That's so cool. Yeah. Man, it's so fun to open up these old 3x3s and, and check out the mechanisms and stuff. Well, there you go. There is the MF8 V2. Finally, the last thing we have in here is this DIY kit. So let's go ahead and open it up. Looks like this bag is pretty uh, kind of tattered and ratted up a bit. But here we go, we have the stickers, and we have all of the pieces. So I don't know which version this is. I think it might actually be the uh, version 2, the Type A 2. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it came completely disassembled, so you have to put the caps and the corners even. So this is what a corner would look like. And then the edges, you didn't have to do anything to. So as you can see, this edge has this very, very prominent track here that sticks up about half a millimeter or so. And what's interesting is that the corners don't have a groove to accompany for that. So there, there's basically just a physical space that that track causes, basically just to reduce friction. Um, but yeah, that's pretty neat. And then you have the center piece here. And then he here's the core. So yeah, I wanna say this is the version two or something like that. I don't know for sure though. Um, ah, yes, it does. It's just very, very faded. Alpha 2. So this is the second version. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this and then I'll be back and I will show you guys um, how it moves. I don't know if I'm gonna lubricate it. I might just keep it dry and see how it turns without lube uh, and then add some later. All right, so I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and assemble this on a video. So let's go ahead and go for it. First, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these caps in. Looks like this cap actually has the Alpha logo engraved in it. That's pretty cool. All 
All right, so let's go ahead and assemble this core. All right, so we have the core assembled. These screws are pretty loose, so I might have to tighten them up later. Uh, I couldn't get them to tighten up anymore with this screwdriver, so I'm gonna have to try something else. But let's go ahead and assemble this now. All right, so there is the cube assembled. This is incredibly loose. Um, so I have got to get a new, another screwdriver and tighten this up a whole bunch. Okay, so this one should work a bit better. Let's go ahead and see. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna keep tightening this. All right, so there we go. I've tightened this up a whole bunch and now the turning is much more usable. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and play with the tensions just a little bit more and then get these caps back on and then it'll be ready to stick her up. All right, so this is about as tight as it'll possibly get. I can't get it to tighten anymore. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and pop on these caps. All right, there you go. So it looks like they give you an extra corner cap and an extra, uh, extra center cap, but here we go. Here is the cube, completely dry, no lubricant, and as tight as I can possibly tension it. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and sticker it up. I prefer to do it one by one. That's fast for me. Um, but I think I am gonna go ahead and do this off camera because with a camera in front of me, it's going to take a whole lot longer. All right, so here we go. The Alpha 2 is now all assembled and stickered. Um, and then as for actual turning, oops, <laughs> we got our first pop. How about that? Um, you know, it's besides that, it's, uh, it's not bad. So yeah, popping uh, definitely used to be a problem with these cubes. I wish I could tension it a little tighter, uh, but for some reason I just can't. Um, but yeah, that's the Alpha 2. All right, there is one more cube in this box that I almost forgot about, and that is the Diane Panchi in white. Um, so yeah, I've seen some people in Puzzle Trader looking for these and just in other places as well. So if you guys are looking for one, uh, definitely grab one off of iCube Mart before they go out of stock. So yeah, here you go. This is the worst cube that Diane ever made. <laughs> we can go ahead and look at the mechanism here uh, just to confirm that it is in fact a Panshi. It has black torpedoes. So yeah, the mechanism was just really bad. You can see the stock was super tiny. Um, the core is really, really tiny. Um, the, the pieces just go super far down into the core. These puzzles had a pretty good tendency to break. I actually got to be careful with this now, putting this back together. There we go. But yeah, it, I mean, it definitely feels like a Diane cube, but it's just not that great. But yeah, I'm glad I actually finally have another one of these uh, because these are kind of collector's items now. The pan the Panshees went out of production not too long after they, they uh, came out. So uh, it's definitely harder to come across these. And so yeah, now I have one in white and black. So that's pretty good. Anyways, that is about it for the stuff that I got from iCube Mart. So yeah, this is everything that I got. Lots of great stuff. I guess I'll throw in just for a second here these other two cubes that I showed at the beginning. So yeah, my um, 3x3 collection is coming along very, very nicely as far as older cubes and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad that I was able to get these before they went out of stock. I'll definitely leave a link to iCube Mart uh, in the description. Thanks to them for sending me that extra stuff as well. That was very nice of them. Anyways, that's about it for this unboxing. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. Links to all of my social media pages and my merch store will be linked down in the description below as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.